gosh, it's burn a burning chunk just went right. Uh oh. Okay, I'm gonna... hey guys, it's real. Welcome back to my channel and happy new year, everybody. There is a recipe that's so weird that has been popping up in my feed, and I've gotten a lot of requests from you guys to make this recipe. So here's the deal: I watched it and I'm going to do it, but I'm not so sure that this thing is like food safe. We're just gonna try it and then I'm gonna give you my review. So what it is, and it's going viral, like I see this recipe everywhere. It's a great idea. It is a candle made of butter. And then you stick it in the middle of like a warm loaf of bread. And then you light the candle and the butter melts and you can dip the pieces of bread. I love the idea of it, like an edible centerpiece. How cute for parties or get togethers. But here's the thing. Wicks are made out of cotton and beeswax. But, but, but then burning into the, in the butter and the kind of charcoal -y, I Look, whatever. It's a new year. Let's try something new. We're gonna learn something. Let's get started. So there's two ways to make this butter that we are gonna turn into a candle, and I'm gonna show you one of the ways. Now, you're just gonna start with some softened butter. This is butter that's at room temperature. The mistake I see a lot of people make when they're doing this recipe online is that they'll melt their butter and then stick in a wick and then wait for it to harden up. And then when they take it out, it's all mushy at the bottom. And that's because of science, everybody. So here's the science. Butter is not just fat. It also has water and milk solids in there. So right now in this form, they're all emulsified. They're together. But if you heat it up, they separate. So the easiest way to make a butter candle would be use softened butter. But if you don't want to do this, you could clarify your butter over the stove. That's where you take your butter, put it on the stove, and you basically cook out the water and the milk solids. That one, the candle looks a little more yellow, like a real beeswax candle, but this is definitely easier. Same reason I tell you not to melt your butter for cookies. You want a soft butter. You want all those fats and milk solids and water together. All right, so we've got some soft butter. I've got some chopped rosemary because we're not just gonna do any plain butter in this house. No, I love to season and flavor my butter. So we're just gonna do a little rosemary and garlic. And then this is so easy, you don't need any fancy equipment. Just a little spatula here, you have a spoon. And I'm just gonna mix these together. Look at that. Also to note, I am using a salted butter. I really like Kerrygold. This is not sponsored, that's an Irish butter. And it just has a bit more flavor. I chose the wrong outfit, you guys, but I'm going to a party later. You know, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. This is a situation where it's fashion over function. Maybe I'll do this and then hold them. There we go. This looks a little silly, guys, but this is working. Oh, look at how soft that is. It just comes together. Oh my gosh. Okay, if you want food safe butter, just that. Just scoop this in the middle of a bread bowl. This is ready to go, but here we go. Let's make a weird candle. Okay, here goes nothing. Now that we got our butter mixed together, I'm gonna scoop it into a piping bag just to make the assembly of this candle a little easier on us. Okay, I'm gonna scoop all this delicious butter into this bag. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Smells so good. If you're ever looking for a little way to like spruce up a dinner, just flavor your butter. Game changer. In France, you guys, I went to a restaurant and they brought out a bread and butter tray and there was multiple flavored butter on the table. And I think that was one of the happiest days of my life. <laughs> got our butter in a little piping bag and I'm gonna set it right over here and we're gonna get our little cup ready so the cup that they use in these videos online is a paper cup it's lined with a little bit of waxiness so it's easy to tear off and I'm gonna fill it to about here these are cotton wicks they're dipped in beeswax which I think is basically what makes this not food safe it's similar to a birthday candle some people online are using kitchen twine instead but the problem there is that you're still burning cotton into your food and it's still like charcoal-y. So you, you don't get the beeswax, but you still get the cotton. The only benefit of this is that it's much thinner than the kitchen twine, so you're not burning as much cotton into your food, but still 
cotton and beeswax. So, okay, let's just go. We'll put that in there. Here I've got a little popsicle stick, drilled a hole in there. And this is just to hold this string in place. Now, usually I put this on at the end, but I'm just gonna do it till I get going. And then here we got our butter and a piping bag, little scissors. I'm just gonna cut a hole at the end. Boop, and we're gonna fill it up. Whoa, 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 with feathers. I mean, we're really doing it all today. Then I'm using a spatula to just get it nice and even. Make sure it gets all the way down there. And I'm gonna give it a little tap. All right, let's fill her up. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Now I'm just gonna take a little paper towel, clean this up, stick this back on so that as it's firming up in the fridge, it stays pointed up. Now we're gonna pop this in the fridge for about an hour to harden. The second way to make a butter candle is clarifying butter. So I'm gonna show you how. So we are going to cook out the water and we're gonna cook down the milk. Clarifying butter reduces the amount of lactose. Like for my sister, she's lactose intolerant. So sometimes it doesn't get rid of all of it, but it gets rid of a lot of it. So if you have someone in your life who's sensitive to dairy, it's a cool trick. All right, so what you're gonna do is in a medium sized saucepan, we're gonna add our butter, put your butter inside. Then we're gonna take it over to the stove and on a medium heat, once the butter is melted, turn down the heat to low and add your sliced garlic and this little sprig of rosemary. Then cook on a low heat for about five to eight minutes, stirring occasionally. Your butter will start to like foam. Those are the milk solids and the water coming up and the water will evaporate and then the milk solids will sink down to the bottom and that's how you'll know it's done. Now we're gonna strain the butter through a coffee filter. I've got a little coffee filter with a sieve and I'm just placing it on top of a heat safe measuring cup and here we go. I'm just gonna go slow, being careful because it is really hot. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Now, right now, you just want to let it strain. Like, just let it do its thing. It's going to go nice and slow. Don't take a spatula and try to make it go faster. That will push melt chunks through. We don't want to do that. And watch. Look how cool this looks, you guys. Look at it. Science is happening right in front of our eyes. Oh my gosh, we've made clarified butter, you guys. Boom, science. So if you ever wanted to learn how to do it, that's how to do it. Now we're gonna remove this. Oh, look at that. It's all of our flavorings and the milk solids. Using the same paper cup, pour in your clarified butter. Because this is very liquidy, you can just place the wick. Then again, popsicle stick with a hole right through the middle. Now this butter candle is gonna take longer to solidify, so we're gonna pop this in the fridge for two hours. While the candles are setting up in the fridge, I am gonna prepare our bread bowl, basically. All you need is a round loaf of bread. I'm doing sourdough because it's the best. That's not up for debate, everybody. That's that's a fact. Now let's cut a hole in the middle. So I'm gonna use this as a guide and just place it right here on the top. I've got two different types of knives and hopefully I don't chop off my dress. No dress and no fingers. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space, about a quarter inch out, and I'm not going too deep. I'm, I'm just going all the way around the cup. Take your time. Just to get the right shape get this started. Now that I've got that cut out, I'm gonna go just a little bit deeper. Now we're gonna pull out the center. And this is basically my ratio that I want whenever I'm having a soup bread bowl. I'm like, I'll take this and then just put my soup in there. <laughs> okay, so as you can tell, we put the cup in. We're gonna have to go a lot deeper. We wanna go to this blue line because that is how big our butter candles are. We got a ways to go. Boop, 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 boop. We go around again, take that out. Oh my gosh. Okay, that fits in there. That's real nice. It's a little snug, but that's okay. I'm fine with it. Now we're gonna take a large serrated knife and cut slices to make a pull apart shareable appetizer. Cut it like a pizza. I like to do an X and then slices in between. Hold the bread together with this hand and then I'm gonna be doing 
three additional cuts and you can see how big that slice is. If you want to make them thinner or thicker, that's totally up to you. That's your choice. The bread is looking good and you could just serve it like this, but if you'd like to serve it a little bit toasted and warm, you can heat your oven like I'm going to do to 400 degrees and pop it in there for about five minutes. I took the butter candles out of the fridge and got everything ready to go. We've got our two loaves and now we just have to peel off this paper cup. I need a little help to start, so I'm just gonna cut the side and then we should be able to just peel. Oh, look at that! It's so cute! Once we get it out, we just gotta make the wick. There we go. Then do the same thing with the clarified butter candle. Oh, look at that. But you can really see the difference between a clarified butter. It looks more like a beeswax candle than just a softened butter, but both are so cute. Boop. Okay, softened butter going into our bread bowl. Boom! It's beautiful. Now, clarified butter. Okay. Okay, okay. And ta-da, there you have it. Here are the butter candle bread loaves that we've made today. And now we're gonna light them and give them a try, you guys. Oh my gosh, it's burn a burning chunk just went right, uh-oh. Okay, I'm gonna do this first. Get that going. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh shoot. So this candle, you can hear a little crackling, and then this one, you can't hear anything, and I think it's because this butter still has water in it, whereas this butter, our clarified butter, does not. But you can really hear this one. I mean, listen. After lighting these, this has been taking forever. You know, if you've got guests that are hungry and they're ready to go, I mean, this much of it is, is heating up. And I've got hungry guests. They're ready for some yummy bread and butter and they can all see it and smell it, but nope, can't have any, not yet. They're both heating up right in the middle, but uh, it's just slow. Here's another piece of advice. Light your loaves ahead of time. It's gonna take a long time to heat up this butter. I genuinely love the idea of this. I love when people are creative with food and I love that this is for, you know, a party. You could share at a dinner party or a get together. Like this is so cute, but I think I would have just done it without the candle. Like if you hollowed out the middle, left the slices, but you just put in this like seasoned soft butter into the middle and when you take it out of the the oven, the bread would naturally even soften it more and melt it a little bit. That would make this really cool. Would this also be a funny idea if you had a friend who didn't like sweets? Like if they preferred savory things to sweet things, they don't love birthday cake. They wanted like butter and bread. So we have been timing this. I have a timer going and it's been 25 minutes since I have lit these butter candles and this is what it looks like. So I'm gonna dig in because I can't wait any longer. Maybe that'll help. Oh yeah, look at that piece. It's ready to come out. So let's try the clarified better first. And we're just gonna go for it again. This is probably not food safe. Nope, the clarified butter is pretty hard. Well, there you go. Oh, um, I mean the flavors are the flavors are great, but it tastes a little charcoaly. Now we're gonna try the softened butter bowl. Let's try this now. Again, it's kind of melted on the top. We'll pour that down because it's still pretty firm from the fridge. It's only melted just right at the top. Here we go again. Woo! The flavor of this butter is stronger. I prefer it. Mmm, 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 mmm. The presentation is a 10 out of 10. This is wow factor. This is so much fun. It's very creative, but the wick makes it not food safe. So if you're gonna make this at home, my thoughts, my opinion were to be, make this butter recipe. Just don't put the candle wick in it. Thanks for suggesting this video, you guys. Let me know if there's any other weird food trends that I should try. Let me know in the comments down below and I will give it a go. I'll do my best to make it happen. All right, thanks for watching, you guys. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe, it's free, and ring the bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video because we're gonna be doing some fun, weird stuff this year. All right, happy new years, you guys. Hope you have a good one, bye-bye. And if you'd like to watch any other videos, you can click up here or up here.